two years ago, I'm at my in-laws place in Fredericksburg. Uh, I consider myself an outdoorsman, can live off the land, hunting, fishing, from field to table, I can take care of it. So on this case, or on this particular occasion, I'm headed out to harvest some Mustang grapes. It's August, the grapes are ripe, I'm gonna go out and get some Mustang grapes and make some jelly. So I go out there, it's a little rainy, a little cool on August, uh, bring a ladder out with me, put it up over the fence, start to climb over the A-frame, it's an eight-foot A-frame ladder climbing over a five-strand barbed wire fence, climb over, get to the top, and it starts sinking in the mud a little bit. And I think, oh, Byron, this is dangerous. Be careful. So I stepped off of the ladder onto the top strand of the five-strand barbed wire, kind of crouched down and just bunny hopped right down onto the ground. Landed on the wet ground. My left leg slipped out, full weight. 230 pounds. Fell back <laughs> down onto my right leg and I stopped and then, and I fell down again. My leg snapped. That make you uncomfortable a little bit? Made me uncomfortable a little bit too. So I fell over on the ground, I look up at my leg, like, oh no, and my leg is, my knee's up, my foot is that way. So in a panic moment, I reach and I grab my leg and I pull it forward, like, like I pulled it out of joint or something, like it's my shoulder and I'm going to pop it back into joint. I didn't think about physiology at the time, I just grabbed it and pulled it, and it stayed there, and I'm like, oh, okay, good. <laughs> and then, boom, it fell over to the side. And then panic set in. So fortunately, uh, adrenaline is good. I stopped feeling things at that time. Uh, I called Marissa. I said, hey, um, I'm out in the pasture, uh, you know, out there behind the, uh, the peach orchard over there by the grapes. Uh, I think I hurt my leg uh, pretty good. If you could give me like a one by two and some rope, I need to put a splint on it. Because I'm thinking Boy Scouts, I can take care of this, no problem. And Marissa says, oh, no, 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 let me, let me call it, let me, what else? It, no, just, I, I don't know where any of that stuff is. So I'm, okay, well, just find like a stick and like an old sheet, and I'll rip it, and I'll kind of make, I'll fashion it that way. And, and she's like, no, I'm going to call, I'm going to call an ambulance. I'm like, don't call an ambulance. And she said, no, 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 I need to call an ambulance. Uh, so I said, okay, so. She wouldn't call the ambulance. So I'm sitting out there. The cows are starting to gather around me. <laughs> Just kind of sitting there bored. So I call Chris. Hey, Chris, what's going on? Hey, brother, I need you to kind of say a prayer for me uh, right now. Uh, I'm lying in a pasture with my uh, leg broken pretty bad. Uh, I'm waiting for the ambulance now. And so he's like, oh, and so we're, we're praying together over the phone. Uh, ambulance, fire truck, uh, brush truck, three trucks come from the Fredericksburg uh, Fire Department. Uh, they come out there, they put an IV in. Before they even touch me, they put me on an IV. They put a splint on there, they hike me out. Uh, so that was a good time. A uh, couple months later, thought I might have had like a kid, uh, kidney stone, went into the minor emergency clinic. They did a few tests, did some blood work, came in. Uh, we need to just switch you in the other room and get you on an IV for a kidney stone? That's weird. So they put me in there, and they came in a little bit later, and they're like, uh, well, there's a few things that this could be. Uh, we need you to go to the emergency room right now. Just straight from here, go to the emergency room. So I went to the emergency room. I'd never been to a hospital for more than a day or for more than a couple hours. Spent the next three days uh, with diverticulitis in a ward with no food or anything, just IV fluids, while they injected me with antibiotics through IV, gave me shots every few hours in my abdomen uh, to try to keep the infection down or do emergency surgery. So I had that going for me. It was a good couple of months. Uh, I really enjoyed it. If you guys uh, need a quick way to get to uh, your maximum amount of pocket, uh, that's one way to do it. <laughs> Uh, but it's not just me. So, real quickly, my daughter, Kaylin, sitting right there when she was one years old, down in Fredericksburg. We need to stay away from Fredericksburg. I had things happen there. We were at my, uh, my wife's grandfather's uh, funeral down there. I took Kaylin home early. She was just under one. 
Uh, and she, when I got her out of the car, she was kind of rigid a little bit. Um, so I took her in and her head was kind of back. Uh, she wasn't responding well. She wasn't tracking with her eyes. Figured something's wrong. She was having a seizure. So my dad and I, fortunately my dad was there, took her to the ER. She started to aspirate on the way in the car. Got her into the ER. I mean, just doctors and nurses just flowed in. As she was on the table, they, were, they had the, um, the bag. They were bagging her, trying to resuscitate her, yelling questions to me. What did she have? Where was she at? How much did she weigh? And I couldn't answer anything. I'm just like, I, I, don't, I don't know what's going on. Uh, Marissa came. We sat there. We cried. We prayed. Um, come to find out, she had a complex febrile seizure. Uh, a month later, she had another one. Followed the, uh, we went from uh, Presby here, or at the time, I guess it was still uh, its previous name. Uh, Cook Children's came up, took her to an ambulance, said, hey, Dad, he pulled me aside, follow us behind, follow behind the ambulance. If the lights come on, don't follow us, we'll meet you there. And okay, so followed down, got into Fort Worth, sitting in traffic, and all of a sudden, I don't remember those lights flashing before. Uh, and sure enough, ambulance boom, jumped the curb and took off down the median. And I'm just sitting there in my truck like, oh, okay. That's, that's a problem. Fortunately, Marissa called me, said everything's okay. Uh, she's just having another seizure. She ended up being fine. They were febrile seizures just from a, a, uh, a spike in temperature from what we believe was an ear infection. She had these complex febrile seizures. She was in and out of seizures that time for, for hours. Uh, Joshua thought he had appendicitis. Come to find out in our mid another midnight ride in uh, what had to be the heckle and jekyll of uh, transport units. No offense to, to Matt, wherever he is, on uh, what transport drivers for ambulances can be at 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, he had an, a reaction to something. They had some complications with it. Uh, suffice to say, thought it was appendicitis. 4 o'clock in the morning, doctor comes down the dark hall as I'm sitting in the waiting room as I had been by this time too many times by myself uh, and said, Dad, your son there threw us for a, uh, for a loop. Apparently he had an ormental torsion, so not appendicitis, so that's where the lining between the abdomen and the stomach gets twisted and infected. Uh, just as bad, Dr. Goff, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you guys have Dr. Goff. Mike, uh, Dr. Goff said, you know what, I'll, for, I'll spend the rest of my career, I'll never see another one of these. Micah, kidney issues, grade five reflux in utero, had kidney surgery on his year birthday for kidney obstruction with grade five bladder reflux in the same right side. It's rolling, rolling to seven every time he rolled the dice. I say all of this not to feel sorry for me. You may be at this point in time, you shouldn't. I say all of this in that whenever I have a single incident, uh, kids have a temperature, uh, kids say, oh, my stomach's, my stomach's not feeling right. My mind goes quickly to the worst, and it's because I've seen a lot of worse. So, you know, it's always easy to look at it and say, you know what, it's, it'll be fine. It's just their kids. They'll just get sick. Tell me that, and I'll, I'll agree with you. I'll say yes. And um, there's been plenty of times where that's turned to worse for me. So I am anxious. I'm, uh, I'm OCD, I say sometimes to just where it's kind of fun. I'm OCD to that point. I'm a germaphobe just to, just because it's fun. Who doesn't like to be a germaphobe? Uh, <laughs> earlier I put some hand sanitizer on and I came back in uh, and shook hand again. He said, oh, you realize that I just shook 50 people's hands. You got it all back on your hands now and thank you, Dale. I appreciate that pointing that out. I'm gonna go wash my hands again, so. For all of that, I've had to deal with that anxiety. Now, I'll be honest, I've gone to, I have seen, after uh, encouragement from many others, uh, saw, uh, saw a counselor about it who gave me some, some ways to deal with it. Uh, but I wanted to share with you a little bit, sorry for that long introduction, of just something that I have found uh, to be helpful for me. Uh, so if you would, we had a lot of verses here, so uh, we're not going to put all of them up. But if you guys want to turn to uh, Philippians 4, uh, verses 4 through 8. 
So I wanted to read to you a little bit, and because uh, the others might share a little bit, but I'm going to use an alliteration because that's the type of guy I am. Who doesn't like some good alliterations in their messages? Uh, so we'll start out here in verse 4. He says, Rejoice in the Lord. Again, I will say rejoice. So when dealing with anxiety, when dealing with worry, I would say step number one is rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord. It's counterintuitive, I'll admit. In Philippians, he says like eight, nine times, rejoice. Rejoice with me. Uh, rejoice. I rejoice with you all. Rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say rejoice. Step one is rejoice out of obedience. Not because you so like it. It's not, you don't have to be happy. You don't have to be cheerful. Uh, but you rejoice. Next, he says in verse 5, Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. So the next one is reassure yourself. The, Christ is coming. This isn't just talking about the Lord being near, like physically near. It's talking about his pending return. So reassure yourself uh, that Christ is at hand, that Christ will be coming soon. Continuing on in verse 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer supplication with thanksgiving let your request be known to god so next one have a uh, rejoice reassure the next one is request request so here uh paul says three he, he says prayer in different ways right he says obviously prayer supplication with thanksgiving let your request be known to god the next is just go to God in prayer. I had a spunky, as a matter of fact, uh, recommended a book to me uh, by Kenneth Boa called, uh, uh, it's, uh, um, I'm trying to think of the actual name, uh, Praying Scripture to God. Uh, is a great book. Sometimes whenever things are going on, it's hard to know what to pray. Scripture is the best prayer there could be. So Kenneth Boa does a good job of putting together some with different topics with a daily thing of just reciting scripture back to God in a prayerful manner. Next, it says after let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Next is rest. Take a moment breathe do a breathing exercise right one two three if you got your apple watch whatever it is just rest for a minute don't focus on the problem what the fix is just rest next continuing on in verse eight finally brothers whatever is true whatever is honorable whatever is just whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is commendable if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So the last one is reflect on truth. Um, I've read somewhere that this is the shortest biography of Christ there is uh, in the Bible. He's honorable. He is pure. He is lovely. He is commendable. He is excellent. He is worthy of praise. Focus on those things. So, rejoice, reassure yourself, request, go to God in prayer, rest, and reflect on truth. Uh, it's all pretty simple. It sounds simple, and in the moment, it's not always uh, that way. One of the things that, um, that kind of, that called to mind this, uh, besides uh, hearing the news of Chris being sick, that I, I admit, that did happen. I did go there. Uh, I do go there, but uh, these are words that, that are encouraging to me. The other thing was a friend of mine on Instagram put a little meme post, quote, whatever it is. It's not really a meme, I guess, technically. But it said that uh, Christmas is coming. It's time, something like Christmas is coming. It's time to put away my normal anxiety and get out my fancy Christmas anxiety. Um, we're coming on to the holidays. A lot of us will be with family uh, this week, which there's no stress or anxiety uh, in anybody's relationships, I'm sure. Uh, 
but it is a time of year when we put expectations on ourselves. We're trying to make things good for our kids. We're trying to go to all the parties. Uh, I have my position at work. I have conflicts everywhere with things that are going on. It's a busy time. It's easy to get caught up um, with those other things, to be worried about the wrong things instead of focusing uh, on what is important, uh, important during this season. So I want to encourage you guys. Uh, to take an opportunity to look at this passage, uh, if you think of it during that, uh, during those times, uh, it's been something that's been meaningful to me uh, for a long time. Uh, so, appreciate you guys uh, letting me share that with you.